This video is brought to you by Paw, the most advanced API tool for Mac. Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at GraphQL and how to use it with Swift UI and Xcode. And uh, if you searched for uh, a tutorial on GraphQL together with Xcode, then you probably know what it is, so you can skip ahead a few minutes. But if you're new to that whole thing, let me just give you a quick overview about what GraphQL is and the website of GraphQL at graphql.org uh, makes it abundantly clear that this is a query language for your API. And what that looks like is also displayed in this little animation here. So in a JSON-like manner, uh, you're describing what you want from an API. So in this example, you'd like to get a hero and you want certain information about that hero, namely, for example, the name, or in addition, you're thinking about, maybe I also want the height, and then you also want um, the mass of this hero. And um, as soon as you add this to your description, you actually get exactly what you want. So in other words, ask for what you need and get exactly that. Now, um, let me just quickly show you how this works in practice. I'm going to use uh, the Countries API from Trevor Blade, which is uh, really cool for these demonstration purposes. So let's just quickly copy countries.trevorblades.com. And I'm going to head over to Paw to um, actually try the API out before we're going to um, use it in Xcode. Um, so I'm just going to paste my um, URL here, countries.travelblades.com. And in the body section here, I can switch to GraphQL. And this is where I'm going to uh, define my request. So um, I'm interested in the country and we have to provide a country code here. So let's maybe go with US, for example. And then what I'd like to also get is um, the name of this country um, that I have uh, just searched, searched for using US. I'd like I'd also like to get the native um, name of this country in this in its native language. And I'd also like to get the capital. Um, and just going to send my request here. And indeed, what I get is United States, um, the native um, name of this country is the United States and the capital is Washington DC. Well, if I now also want to get the currency, I'm going to add currency right here. So we have US dollar. And if I'd also like to get the states and uh, we have quite a few states. So this is stored in an array. Got this from the documentation of the API. So I know I have to work with an array here and a state has a name. So let's resend this request and there we go. Here we have all of the states. We have Alabama, we have Alaska. Um, Arizona and so on. And now if I don't want the states anymore, just move that. And instead I'd maybe like to get um, an emoji of the country flag. So I'm just going to resend my request and here we go. Now maybe let's uh, search for the Netherlands and uh, see what we get here. And indeed we have the Netherlands, kind of a, don't know how to pronounce that in the native tongue. Uh, we have Amsterdam, we have Euro as the currency. Uh, we have our emoji here. Let's have a look at Great Britain and see if that works. And with the United Kingdom, we have London, we have the currency and we have our emoji. So this is a definitely a great way to explore APIs. Keep in mind that your APIs need to support uh, GraphQL and with Paw you have a tool um, that lets you work with GraphQL really, really easily before you get into development. But now that, uh, that we know actually how this works and how to make these requests and these queries, um, let's see how to do that in Xcode and really use the data in a Swift UI application. And therefore I've prepared a little application called it GraphQL Country. And it really is just a standard Swift UI application. And I have added 
a new group here, um, which is called GraphQL. It contains an Apollo.swift file and a queries.graphql file. Um, now this is recommended in the documentation. So if we have a look at uh, the Apollo documentation, which is the framework that we're going to use um, to use GraphQL in Swift and uh, in Swift UI, of course, and in Xcode. And that also means um, that to actually use um, GraphQL, we need to get this Apollo framework installed into our project. There are several options. As you know, we have uh, the simplest version, which is using uh, Swift Package Manager, um, looking here for the repository at GitHub. So I'm just copying um, that URL here. Um, you could also use Carthage or CocoaPods, but I'm definitely going to go um, with the um, Swift Package Manager installation, going back to um, uh, Xcode. And of course, you will find all the necessary links in the video description below. So in Xcode, let's hit file, let's hit Swift Packages and add our dependency. And um, we're going to paste our URL here, hit next, let that verify, let's use the uh, current version. And I'm going to select all of the packages for now in case I'd like to work with them in the future. You could also go come back and uh, remove one of them if you don't need them anymore. Um, so with that done, we actually have all the packages and dependencies that we need. Now we should have a look at the Apollo documentation again. And in the usage section, in the documentation, um, you will find the hint on downloading a schema. And Apollo iOS requires a GraphQL schema file as input to the code generation process. And a schema file is a JSON file that contains the results of an introspection query. So now, how do we get this schema file as a JSON file? And um, I find it personally very easy to just use uh, the terminal to do that. Um, you need to make sure to have the Apollo CLI um, package installed on your machine. If you don't have that, um, then make sure that you have Homebrew installed on your machine. Um, to install Homebrew, just copy that link, paste it to your terminal, follow the steps. And then if you need to install the Apollo CLI, just hit brew install Apollo, uh, Paul, Apollo minus CLI, and then it's going to install. And uh, the rest is fairly, fairly simple. Um, you can actually just uh, go back to um, the documentation here and then copy Apollo schema download and so on. And um, then you just have to replace the local host with the endpoint of the API that you're going to be working with. Um, in Paw, you saw that we just used countries, trevorblades.com. And this is what we can do here again. So in my terminal, I'm going going to uh, remove what I've just written and going to paste that right here. So I already have my endpoint countries.trevorblades.com and then I'm going to perform that command. And depending on where you performed this command, you will get your schema file.json and all I have to do now is just drag and drop that to my project, uh, make sure that I add it to my targets and we have obtained the necessary schema file. Now that we have this schema, uh, we could already maybe add our query to um, our queries.graphql file. So I'm opening up um, my paw um, file here, my paw request, going to copy that right here. And um, then what we also have to do is giving our query a name. I'm going to go with query um, specific country. I'm going to go with US again here. Make this look a, bit, a little bit better and save that. And this is going to be my query that we're going to be working with later. And now uh, the magic actually is, uh, uh, the magic of Apollo is that it takes this query and then automatically generates code for us to work with um, our query and to get the data that we need. Uh, but in order for this to work, uh, we need to add some scripts here that are specific to each method that you are using when adding um, 
uh, when adding the um, Apollo framework, so depending on if you're using Swift Package Manager, CocoaPods, or Carthage, you should do several different steps, but you will find each step um, in the installation section of the documentation, and there you will have uh, to look for adding a code generation build step. And we're going to do that. Um, so we're going to add a script to our build phase, and it's really important now to, let's maybe just copy that name here, generate Apollo GraphQL API, to put that at the right position. We need to drag this um, script to uh, just above our compile sources um, in our build phase so that it, as it says here, co uh, executes before our code is compiled. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, again, open up Xcode, go into my GraphQL country project, open my target, go into build phases, um, and here I'm going to add a new one by pressing this plus a button here, creating a new uh, run script. And this run script, let me just quickly uh, name that. Not just that it's not just called run script. And then I'm just going to drag and drop that right below the pendency. So we have generate Apollo GraphQL API now here. And now depending on what you're using, Swift Package Manager um, or Carthage or whatsoever, we're going to copy this run script right there. So here we have our run script, which is going to create an api.swift file from our schema. Um, so going back uh, to Xcode, going into generate Apollo GraphQL API, I'm going to paste that right here. Um, and if everything checks out, we should be able to build our project and don't go uh, get any error. So here we have a firewall warning because it's going to connect. And for me, my build succeeded. And what I can do now is open my project folder, and by building um, our project now for the first time, we got an api.swift file, which I can now drag and drop into my GraphQL section or into my GraphQL group. I'm going to finish that. And as you can see here, based on our query that we specified in queries.graphql, it created a specific API class for us or a class on a specific, a specific country query uh, that we can use now. And therefore, I'm going to go into my Apollo.swift file. This is where I'm going to add my networking code now. So I'm importing Apollo, creating a class called network. And here I'm going to create a static shared object of our network class. And to create an Apollo client um, that we can use to um, uh, perform a query, for example, I'm going to create a lazy variable, calling it Apollo. It's going to be my Apollo client, which we have to initialize with a URL from a string. And here we have our countries.trevorblades.com to force and wrap this. Um, and then we have our Apollo client that we can use to fetch entries from our API. And this is going to be done in our content view because here we are going to um, display some results. And uh, maybe let's start um, here with a very simple example, just displaying our country emoji for our query. Therefore, I'm going to create a state variable, calling it country emoji initializing it with an empty string. And we want to display that in our text field right here. So I'm passing along my country emoji here. And we want to load that or fetch that information on up here. So here we want to perform some code. And now we can use our network, our shared object, use the Apollo client, call fetch a query. Our query is called specific country query. It's exactly what we defined here, specific country. And this was automatically generated for us by our build script with the Apollo code generation. And this is what we want to perform. And we will get some results here in a closure that we can work with. And we can just switch through this result. And with two cases, either we have success and we define our graph QL result right here or we have the case failure, then we can define our error and print something like error and display it right here. Uh, but now let's hope we have a success. And what we'd like to do now is actually just 
update our country emoji variable um, with the emoji that we got from our API. So let's check if we got that. Let's create an if let statement, check if we have an emoji by using our GraphQL result, accessing its data, the country, and here we have all the information that we queried for. Um, and this is also the emoji that we're looking for. And if this works, then we can use self and our country emoji and set this to emoji. Since we're doing some user interface updates, we're going to use the dis dispatch queue main, perform that on the main thread, just uh, pasting that into this code block, build that real quickly and then run this in the simulator. And indeed we get our US flag right there. Now, what if we change our country code maybe to DE for Germany? Let's run this again and see if we have a change right there and just allow that. And of course we get the German flag now. And this is how you integrate GraphQL into your iOS projects or into your SwiftUI projects uh, with Xcode 12 and the Apollo framework. Hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like it if you did. Subscribe to my channel to not miss any future tutorials. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.